Hilltop Grand Village for our Let's Learn Together session. Today we have Annette and she's going to be talking to us about putting our house, our living space, on a space to diet. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Misty. Hi, my name is Annette Procremer. A little background information on me. Um, I am married and have three adult children and a grand puppy and 10 grand chickens and now I just acquired two grand heifers and we're looking at some uh, grand pigs too. But uh, my daughter's all into the um, mini farming and stuff like that. Uh, my other daughter just recently moved to Milwaukee and she's um, a aquatics director in Waukesha. Uh, and my son works for a company that sets up the distribution for Amazon.com. So uh, yeah, he sees a lot of stuff too. So um, anyhow, uh, getting back in, getting into this business, I acquired it six years ago. It is a franchise and the franchisor is carrying transitions, but each of our offices are independently owned and operated. One of the reasons I did that, went with this company, it, a lot of people said, well, yeah, couldn't you just do this on your own and stuff like that? The, the knowledge that I acquire, all the other franchises acquire, there's 200 of us across the country right now. We're the only home transition company in the nation. And we are all trained basically the same way. Our offices are run independently. Um, but the training is uh, required training for a CRTS, which is a Certified Relocation and Transition Specialist. Um, it's a training that includes Alzheimer's, hoarding, and senior living. So um, with those in mind, we, we can help various um, generations, I believe. I believe this would be good service for young mothers whose husbands or they get transferred and need to pack and they're trying to pack with toddlers running around but our main focus is the senior population. So with that being said, let's talk about the space diet. So um, is your living space fat, full of acquired things? Like physical fitness, household fitness is a common American issue. We are all in this together. In 2012, UCLA did a study. Managing the volume of possessions in our homes is such a crushing problem. It elevates the level of stress hormones in our bodies. Many of the homes I go into either after a person has been moved to a skilled nursing facility because of a health issue or a fall or something like that, or after someone has passed away, we see a lot of the anxiety and the stress in their homes. How, you know, the home becomes very, you know, overpowering to them, overwhelming to them. And also with the children who have to take care of what's left. For older adults, an increase in stress hormones contributes to memory impairment. Other side effects include fatigue, depression, anxiety, sadness, trouble eating, sleeping, aches and pains, and weight loss. I read an article a number of years ago on LinkedIn about the theory of three feet. A lot of these people that live alone in their homes, they have a recliner. Alongside the recliner is a remote, remote control, sometimes a TV or a refrigerator, and sometimes on the other side a commode. So they only have to move three feet in their living area. So because it becomes so overwhelming and they can't function any other places. So something to keep in mind. More than stress, like being overweight, excessive clutter can be unhealthy. Safety issues. Not having your aisles wide enough so that you can get a walker or a wheelchair around. Uh, doorways. 
honestly, I had ankle surgery three years ago now, and that was the most anxiety I've had in a long time because I couldn't shower alone. I had to wait for my husband to help me get in and out of our shower, and I have a step-in shower. But the doorway to get into my bathroom was too narrow for me to go with a, a wheelchair or to go with you know my crutches my crutches I could but then you know to step into the shower it was not safe I didn't have hand grab bars or anything like that so dust and mold and insects um, surprisingly we just did an online auction in a 17 year old condo and there was a lot a lot a lot a lot of stuff and in amongst all that stuff was a lot of mouse feces and mouse dander and dust and stuff like that which because of all of the stuff the mice could hide very easily and you were not aware that you even had a problem so um and then unpleasant living spaces okay we've all seen hoarders on tv you know I, everybody you know questions it and it is, it does become overwhelming and people, you know, have an issue with moving that stuff. Okay, why do I have so many things? I didn't downsize before I moved last. Everything's coming with me. I'm going to move everything. We'll take care of it later. Um, I'm not sure what I need for my new lifestyle, so I'm going to keep everything. And I may have... I may move again, and then I'll need different stuff. Uh, I'm not attached, I, I'm attached to my things. I love those things. I'm not getting rid of those things. And then a lot of people, they just don't know. So instead of downsizing, they just move it all. Funny story, my dad got transferred up here to central Wisconsin from down by the Fremont area many before I was born. And the movers, the company paid for the movers to move my mom and dad. And when they got, mom and dad got to the new house, here was their garbage. The movers even moved their garbage. <laughs> <laughs> they packed everything. So, um, that, you know, it can happen. The problem with things. Changes in life can be difficult. But just like using food to help ourselves feel better, Trying to make ourselves feel better with things is not the answer and may only lead to bigger problems. So, you know, a lot of us, you reward yourself with, oh, let's have that piece of pie, okay? Otherwise, you reward yourself with, oh, I need that new piece of furniture in my house. Don't know where I'm going to put it, but I need that, you know, because I did really good, you know, or, or I'm having anxiety about a relationship or I'm having anxiety about a loss of a pet or a friend or, or something like that. Shopping induces special hormones that make our feel good hormones. So a lot of people shop. Uh, the estate sale we did three or four years ago, this lady was a widow. She had lived alone for a good number of years and her social was going shopping. We donated to a charity after the sale at prices of one, two, three, and four dollars is what I figured. We donated four thousand dollars worth of her clothes. Oh my she had two six-foot closets full and she had a basement with a clothesline from end to end. That was her social. That's, and a lot of them had tags on you from the store. That was how she socialized. She went shopping, built a relationship with the store clerks and things like that. So that's a lot of it. It's, it's a lot of, you know, it's not that her house was like a hoarder, everybody thinks dirty and disorganized. We all hoard to a little extent. Everybody's got a little bit of a hoarder in us. And that's okay. The difference between a hoarder and a collector, does anybody know the difference? Okay, a collector will 
you'll go drop them off or you'll be out socializing with them and they'll collect her and say, come on over, see my salt and pepper collection. Anytime, stop in, anytime. Order, oh, not today, maybe tomorrow. You know, they know that they have an issue and they're embarrassed. So they won't let you in. Okay. Um, decluttering is a diet for the home. Decluttering is more fun than dieting because the results are immediate. That means as soon as you, you know, eliminate stuff that's gone, it's out of the house, your area is straightened up, it's organized, you see the immediate results. So, getting started. Okay, find your motivation. What's your motivation? Maybe you want a new piece of furniture. Where is it gonna fit? You know, how do we wanna do this? That I gotta have that curio cabinet that I saw on sale, okay? Where is it going to fit? What am I going to put in it? That's your motivation to start with. Establish achievable goals. How am I going to do this? Am I, you know, am I going to just dig into it and stress out in a full day of just trying to figure out what I need to declutter, what I need to downsize, or do I do it in increments? I suggest do an hour a day. Just Pick an area, do an hour a day, and set your timer if you need to. Um, I know myself, if I don't set a timer, I end up spending more time on it, you know, and then you get tired and you're overwhelmed. Uh, set realistic time frames. Okay, I'm going to do this this month, or I'm going to have this done by such and such a date. Okay, but make it realistic. Prepare for those unforeseen obstacles, like, you know, yeah, an unexpected doctor appointment or an unexpected family issue or something like that. Build in um, a little bit of give time. Uh, take before pictures. It's always fun. You take that picture of that closet, and then you take after pictures. Overcome your own object objections. Oh, I really, really need that. Oh, I really, really want that. Determine what our true needs and what our true wants. Okay, recognize you are in control. Space diet obstacles. We already know what to get rid of, but why don't we do it? Emotional attachments. It makes us sad. Uh, you get overwhelmed. That closet is just so full. You open the door and everything comes crashing out and you're like, oh, I can't open that door again. <laughs> you know, it's dangerous. But uh, you feel guilty. And the lady shared a story with me last week about how her mother gave her these birds, statues and stuff like that, and she didn't have a place for them. So she sold them in a rummage sale. Her aunt came. Her aunt bought these bird statues and stuff like that and her aunt gifted them to her mother <laughs> her mother showed them to her and she so now she says my mom's been passed now for two years and i still have these birds because i just feel so guilty <laughs> it's okay it's okay you can let go of those items take pictures of them Put them on a digital, put them in a photo album. You can keep those memories that way. But if you're tripping over something, you know, is it something you really, really need to keep that? Okay. Um, fearful. We were talking about it earlier. Someday I might need that. So I can't get rid of that because, you know, um, honestly, the stores are full. If 20 years, 15 years later, you really, really need that, it's probably in the store. So, um, and then resentful. I can't give that up. It just, you know, I, I need to keep that. If I do not keep it, so-and-so is going to be mad at me. You know, 
it's a lot of emotional baggage. We have to feel good about ourselves, feel good about our spaces, and we have to let these negative emotions not control us. Um, the size of your house is not related to the size of your soul, but the condition of your dwelling does reflect the condition of your being, of your mind, of your body, and your spirit. So keeping that in mind, how do you feel? The space diet might be your answer. The space diet warm-up. I gave you a handout, and on the handout we'll have all the notes from this, too. Define your area. What area are we going to target today? What area are we going to work on this month? Define the area. Uh, assemble your equipment. Garbage bags, sorting totes, storage totes, things like that. Um, if you're going to have a sale of some kind, price tags, markers. Now I hate to say it, your, your um, computer or iPad for research. You need to research the items and see, you know, what a fair price would be. Work the visible areas first, because that will help you accumulate uh, going on to some of those harder areas that are more, um, maybe say, memorable, where you have your keepsakes. Okay. Work the space. Again, set a timer if you need to. But stick to the task. When we go in and we do um, a clean, any work on a house and the, the client has passed or has moved or whatever, what I do is set a person in the room and a basket outside the door. They cannot leave that room. I don't know about you, but me, I, I'm in a room and I grab a cup, oh, this should go in my kitchen or this goes in the laundry room. Half an hour later, I'm back to where I started. So if it goes to a different room or a different space or you're organizing, you know, put it all, put a laundry basket so that's like a reminder, nope, I can't leave this room until my time limit is up. So um, put a basket there or, or a barrier or shut the door, whatever. Um, get rid of distractions, turn off your phone. You know, put your, or put your phone in a different room uh, put on radio. They say 50s and 60s rock and roll is the most motivating <laughs> because it's upbeat and it keeps you going and things like that. Um, stay focused. Again, talking not moving from your area. Have a buddy or a coach. Have a non-emotional non partner, a good friend. And, and they'll look at you and say, do you really need that? <laughs> you know, so that you can let go. Uh, work, uh, make non-emotional decisions. Okay, you gotta try, it's hard, it's gonna be hard, but you gotta keep a lot of your emotions out of this. And then push for results. Push yourself a little bit. It's like when you're running a marathon or, or you're working out and you're like, just two more minutes. Just, you know, push yourself and make sure that you get how you wanna, how you want that space to look. Remember, that's a, that's a picture or a portrait of yourself. Your space is a portrait of yourself. So you, you want it, do you want it to look cluttered or do you want it to look business-like or lovely or, you know, whatever? So you want to work to make it reflect you. Reward your accomplishments. Take after photos. Enjoy the feeling of your new space. Just working with a new gentleman, a new client of mine, and his wife passed last year, and he's doing a little bit of grieving and stuff, but he's moving into independent living because he can no longer take care of the house and the yard. He's like on 40 acres, and um, he doesn't have any animals or anything, but it's just, you know, he's mowing lawn every three days or shoveling or, or whatever, so he decided to move to independent living. And uh, we're walking around this house to decide what, what we can pack, what we're gonna move. And he's got deer mounts. 
And I said, okay, Jerry, let's make this your home. Your new apartment, let's make it your home. Let's take the deer mops. Let's take the snowshoes. Hang them on the wall, just like you have them here. Let's make, he's got statue and animal statues. He's gonna take some of the bookcases that she has her cookbooks on and things like that. We're gonna empty those off and he's gonna put his statues on there. Make it your space. And that I think will help him in letting go too. Not that, you know, you're gonna forget that loved one that passed or anything like that, but it's gonna help you move on and let go of things. All right, space diet techniques. Important things, what do we need? What are the things that we really, really need? Do we need, you know, we need clothes, obvious. Healthcare, you know, toothbrushes and, you know, our general, everything like that. Those are the things we really need and we need to find a place for all of those things. Next, what do we love? Okay, you love that old china of grandma's, but it's packed in a box sitting way back in the closet or up in the attic or whatever. How can you love it when you can't see it? Bring it out. Put it in a curio. Um, my mom lives in independent uh, assisted living and uh, what she had all these portraits of her children and grandchildren on eight by tens on the table and things like that. We put them in box and we put them on portrait dividers for each each family it has their own little and they have fam their family portraits in uh, in the shadow boxes and those are hanging on her walls in assisted living, giving her room for the things that she needs handy like her telephone, her notepads, her her schedules for the activities that are going on within you know, the facility and um, her water, you know, little things like that. So we freed up the spaces by going on the wall, by being vertical. All right, so keep that in mind. You, she still has things that she loves and the other pictures and stuff are all in photo albums that she can look at. And if you do that, if you keep the need and the love, a lot of times that takes care of your wants. If you pick the things you need and the things you love, that fills in all of your wants usually. Um, things we used to love or might need and things we do not want or do not need. Okay, so those are the categories that you want to sort into. A good space will only have what we need, what we love, and a little bit of what we want. A great space will contain only items of what we need and what we love. So keep that in mind when you're uh, going through things. I, I don't know if you've read the book by, I think it's Marie Kondo, The Art of Tidying, and she's Japanese. So what she does is she says you should categorize everything in your house. Don't have clothes in two, three areas. Have it all in your room and your closet, walk-in closet, wherever. Have all your clothes in one space. Um, I used to work for a lawyer and her kid's summer job was to organize her house. And the kids came out and she told me, she goes, yeah, they found like 12 black suits, some of which I had never worn. And she said, I didn't realize I had all of them because they were spread out all throughout the house. So get everything together so you know what you have in one space. Categorize. And then what Marie suggests is you're supposed to touch it and you're supposed to say if it brings you joy, then you find a place for it. If it does nothing for it, thank it for its service and donate it or, you know, sell it, let it go. Um, I did that with a client last spring and as we were organizing her house and her closets and stuff like that, it worked very well for her and she, it was so freeing and she's like, okay, I don't know why I'm hanging on to this. And it was easier for her to let it go. So, um, 
we got to decide what do we really, really need? Do we need those 70s elephant pants, you know, from when we were young and happy? And, or do we want to be happy now with the things that really bring us joy? Okay, then what do we love? Our, touch, our touchstones, those things that define who we are. My sister-in-law has a hallway in her house, and what she did with that is she took various photographs from her ancestry and her husband's ancestry and their kids and stuff like that. And they're just all little photographs, but the whole wall is covered. So it's almost like her little mini museum, but that's, you know, something that she loves, sharing her history, and that defines you know, the family history. Take pictures of other less important items that you may be attached to. In today's digital world, we do not even have to keep pictures in our houses anymore. Those um, picture frames that constantly move and stuff like that, those are great. Those are great if you like that, but some people like the touching and the feeling. I still like scrapbooks. I still like photo albums. But honestly, photo albums and scrapbooks, they don't really take up as much room as boxes. You know, boxes of, and that way in the scrapbooking and photo album, you can eliminate some of those because some people take pictures on vacation. They're constantly snap, 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 snap. And only one or two of them are really pictures that you really enjoy you can get rid of the excess pictures. So, all right. Today's exercise, right sizing. Choose a small space in your house. We kinda, if you wanna you know, do this tonight, or this afternoon, get that junk drawer open. Open that junk drawer, remove everything from it. Take everything out. And then clean it up, you know, wipe it out real good and stuff. Now, through the junk you just removed, what do you need? Put that back in your junk drawer. You really need that. Every house should have at least one flathead and one Phillips screwdriver, maybe a tiny hammer, you know, a uh, certain tape, maybe a little bottle of, you know, picture hanging nails or something like that in your junk drawer if that's what your junk drawer consists of, and then discard or donate everything else. Extra playing cards, extra reading cards, your assisted livings, your skilled nursing homes, your adult daycare centers, they could use all of those little things. Um, and, then, and then enjoy, you know, I love it. When I organize something like that, I open the drawer and it's like, that's what I need. Two seconds, you're done. If you're digging and digging, um, I worked with a lady years ago, and every she had three desks, and every desk was cluttered. But she told me, if I can find it in 10 seconds, I'm organized. So she could. She could find what she was looking for within 10 seconds. So if you can find it and live with that organization, more power to you. But I like to be able to open a door and pluck out what I need. Okay, paperwork. Everybody has paperwork. Everything from newspapers down to office, you know, bills, different things like that. There are many organizing, um, what do you want to call, many organizing tools out there at all your shop posts and Home Depots and things like that. Current, I used to use Current years ago for um, sorting greeting cards, for example, and things like that. Um, like love handles, paperwork never goes away. One, one tip is from the mailbox, right from the mailbox. If you know it's an advertisement, walk right up to the recycling container and throw those flyers in there right away. Newspapers. I subscribed to the newspaper just recently just out of helping a fellow vendor 
and stuff like that. I called them the other day. I go, you know, this is beginning to be expensive recycling. Can I cancel? <laughs> we just don't have time to read the paper. Nothing against the newspaper itself. I just don't have time to read it. And then somebody, she said, well, you can get it online because you subscribed. And I'm like, I don't even have time to do that. So um, don't buy it in the first place and bring it in. You know, that's part of um, like the paperwork too. It seems the more we tackle our stacks of paper, the larger they appear. You know, set up a file, okay, bills to be paid, you know, however it works for you. I have mailboxes at home for my family. We each have like a slot, you know, and that you've got to take care of that paperwork on your own. But that helps get the clutter off of my counter so we can eat. So, um, but you know, junk mail. This is this is a big, big problem in our country today. We get those, you know, the stickies for your address labels and stuff like that. And everybody's like, oh, I feel so guilty. They made all these labels for me. Don't, don't feel guilty. On the, what I do is right on the um, thing, I write remove stuff, everything they send me back into their postage paid envelope. Do not put a return address on it and dump it in the mail. They'll remove you from their list. If they don't have a postage paid envelope, I stuff everything in their envelope, return envelope, and I drop it in, drop it in a mailbox drop box somewhere. So they have to pay the postage, no matter how heavy. I mean, you can be really mean. Some people said put washers and extra weight in there because they have to pay by the weight, um, but not necessary. Just they get the hint. I had a lady tell me that they kept track of all the junk mail they got. Within less than a year, they had over 600 items. So um, once you get on one person's list, they sell your name to other lists. So be very careful and, you know, just write remove and mail it back to them and they should remove it for you. Uh, quick sort, use document organizers, like I said, horizontal or for vertical filing units. Ask, for, ask your accountant, what do I really need to keep? Ask them, you know, for tax purposes. What do I really need to keep? Do I need, we shred a lot of bank statements from the 40s and the 50s. That's not necessary to keep that. Um, and actually, you know, it could be a security problem if the wrong person got a hold of that stuff, you know. So shred it at, you know, like a year end or whatever, but double check with your uh, tax professional before you shred things and then use those um randomly a couple of the shredding places will do uh saturday like in the spring watch for that now and they'll they'll allow you up to two boxes that you can bring for free and they'll shred it right on site i know they've done it in certain parking lots like menards and i'm not sure if home depot has but uh double check with them uh the space diet dilemma should I store items, sell, or donate them? <coughs> cash in versus cash out. The average cost of a 10 by 20 storage is roughly $70 a month. Now this was written a number of years ago, so this might be a little bit higher. The smallest unit at U-Haul in Wassa, which is, you know, just a little, cubicle, maybe five by seven, a couple years, three, four years ago was $54 a month. 10 months, that's $540. And how often do you go to that storage unit to get something? That's another thing you gotta keep in mind. If it's in there for a year and you haven't looked at it or touched it, or do you really need it? Those are questions you have to ask yourself. An average garage sale profit is 600 and can be even higher at an estate sale. For central Wisconsin, an average estate sale, average estate sale is $3,500 to $5,000. Put that in perspective, I, my staff and I can put anywhere from 100 to 200 hours into sorting, decluttering, and organizing and prepping 
for an estate sale. Sometimes I, I share with my staff of my clients to just donate. You can get a higher write off donating your items. Um, people are not buying and the value of an item is only what somebody is willing to pay for it. Um, this estate sale we did a Saturday, very fair pricing, you know, a lot of, you know, China. I can't give away China. People are not buying China. I had three sets of stoneware. Not a single set moved this weekend. Cut glass, very rare. And what they're doing with it is they're repurposing it. Things like that. So they're not going to pay what the cut glass is really, really worth. Because they know that they're going to do something. Beautiful dresser I had this weekend and a basset, solid wood, hard furniture, and it never moved. It came, they came on discount day and the guy offered me 50 bucks. Because I'm gonna cut it up anyway, he says. I can't see, he was gonna make it into a bathroom vanity. So that's what we're getting is a lot of the repurposers, they don't wanna pay a lot. And in the six years I've been doing this, I see the estate sale, um, Profits going down farther and farther. So keep that in mind too. I don't know what the uh, auctioneers are, are getting, but um, you know, it, you have to see what works for you. So every situation is different. Okay, most important, the way you use your space is your choice to make. You're the one in control. What do you want to show in that space? What do you want to reflect? of you personally. And that's it. Any questions? No questions. <laughs> that's always the fun part. <laughs> I'll give you an interesting little thing to use though when you're speaking of the paperwork. Um, the office that I worked at before I retired, one of the seminars that we went to was um, uh, hand in paperwork and decluttering your office and that sort of thing. And they said, um, when it comes to papers that come in, uh, the rule should be Ohio, O-H-I-O, only handle it once. So the second it gets your desk, do with it then what needs to be done. And then you aren't having it cluttering, you aren't having it there to pick up and, oh yeah, that's right, I'll do that later. And then three days later, oh yeah, that's right, you know. So now, I mean, it's sometimes you can't. Like for you, you you've got to handle things more than once. But coming into your home, really, that should be rule of thumb. It comes in, it's a bill, sit down and pay it. You know, if it's garbage, like you say, it goes right in the garbage. If it's something that you need for, like an insurance paper or something, buy it. You know, uh, that's mm -hmm. done and out of the way. I was just explaining to my grandson yesterday when he was setting up another desk for me <coughs> um, <laughs> that, uh, that it, it, there's nothing on my desk. It's just already taken care of and filed. It's at the most only there one day and then some, it goes someplace. So that's still, you might want to use that Ohio. Only oh, Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> And I do share with my uh, clients uh, because I get asked, you know, well, what if we move this, so and so. Remember, the more you touch it, the more expensive it becomes. Because if you have to hire a moving company or you have to hire, you know, a U-Haul even to move that to a place to market it, it's, you know, you're pitching out money to um, you know, get something and probably not even make any money. I'll share a personal story with you. Um, as a young mother and in a new home, I had to have this china hutch. I just had to have it, you know. Uh, we paid a thousand dollars for it. And six years ago, when I started this business, I had revamped um, some things in my house, and I no longer wanted the china hutch, so I wanted to um, sell it. Okay, so I advertised on Craigslist and uh, got scammed, but I caught it before, you know, it went too far, but uh, you want to be careful with Craigslist. And then after that, I uh, 
took it or put it in a garage sale and nobody was interested in it. And then I had my husband haul it to one of my estate sales when I first started. Nobody was interested and we were dropping the price each time. So we we're down to 250. And then for a while I'm like, oh, we just can't have this in the garage. It's just gonna get damaged. It's, you know, so we took it to a consignment shop and it finally sold. And I got $54. So uh, the value in the item is only what someone is willing to pay. Keep that in mind. Um, if that's why sometimes we suggest donating. Um, but again, on a, on a note, 10,000 boomers retiring every day and they all have stuff. Though. So everybody's trying to get rid of stuff and I, I had, um, I called to St. Vinny's in Wassa for um, a client and inquiring if they would pick up and, and he goes, actually, I just put a hold on all donations. We are so full, our store cannot handle it. That's amazing. Um, a couple years ago, I talked to one of my um, thrift stores, the manager, and she said to me, she goes, I've had children that have rented the biggest U-Haul, totally loaded up the whole house from mom and dad, both passing, to bring to us, to donate, and I look at them, where am I gonna put it? I don't have storage space. So, you know, also keep that in mind. Um, downsizing can also be like, okay, I buy something at the store, it doesn't fit properly, I don't like it, take it back. Don't be afraid to take things back to the store. I worked at Kohl's and Wasson for grand opening. You wouldn't believe what people were bringing back and Kohl's takes it. I'm not, I don't know if they do that now, but you know, within reason, keep those slips for at least 90 days. Uh, you know, keep those if you don't want it and share with your children. This is a big thing, share with your children. When they're shopping, when your shop, Christmas time comes, my daughter insists on us doing our Christmas list. And I appreciate that because now I'm not getting things I don't want. When we moved my mom and dad into assisted living, I found this sweater in the box, you know, from Christmas, Christmas present from my brother and sister-in-law. So as we're moving, I handed this to my sister-in-law and I said, dad doesn't fit into this and he never wore it. She's like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with it now? It was two, three years later, and you know, if mom and dad would have said something, but they were afraid of hurting their feelings, don't be afraid. You're not gonna, it, it hurts my feelings more if I see that my girls, I used to buy them clothes and then I'd find it in the garage sale the next spring. I'm like, you know, that hurt my feelings more than if I was told, you know, this doesn't fit, it doesn't work for me, it's too hot, you know, whatever the reason is, so that they can return it and buy you something that fits. We've gone to, years ago, uh, for Christmas, I used to pay extra on my dad's electricity bill. So he could, you know, light up all his outdoor lights and not feel guilty about it. Uh, my sister buys them the newspaper. That's her Christmas present to them. When they were living on their own, somebody would give them uh, coupons for groceries. Uh, there are ways to downsize and declutter, you know, without bringing all that stuff into your home. Share with your grandchildren. Your children are gonna look at you and they're gonna say, I have enough of my own stuff. Your grandchildren may or may not take it. Don't be hurt. One of the very first consults I went on when I started this business, very prominent family in the Wassa area. She wanted to, down, to liquidate her mom and dad's uh, furniture and, and items and stuff like that. And she looked at me and she said, you know, mom and dad had really great stuff. It's just not my style. What a blessing to raise individual children that have their own likes and dislikes. So, you know, keep that in mind, don't be hurt. If your children or grandchildren don't want your stuff, be blessed because they have their own individual 
um, likes and dislikes and stuff like that. I found that just this past week in my uh, devotions, I found this about loving your home and I handed it out to everyone. And what it, bear with me here, but by wisdom a house is built and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Proverbs 24, 3-4 out of the NIV. And the, the devotion goes on to say how this young lady bought, her and her husband bought their new home, and the previous owners thought that they were going to be generous and leave everything that they thought would, you know, make them feel homey because they enjoyed it, including a stray cat. <laughs> she was allergic to the cat, so she found a home for it. But then um, the lessons, you know, that she learned is making a home is so much more than investing in material updates. It's, you know, again, it's a reflection of your soul. So when you are, are downsizing or leaving your home or something like that, the paint cans, the, you know, the things, no, they're not going to touch up your paint. They're going to come in and do their own painting. So the paint cans and things like that have to be disposed of. The, you know, obviously you want to keep like shingles and, you know, major stuff like that. But uh, some of that, those personal tastes of yours, you'll want to discard those because they're going to they're gonna make their own home. So just a few things to keep in mind. So I, I really thought this kind of fit into everything today. So anything else anybody would like to discuss or? Well, thank you for your time and uh, patience with me. Uh, I hope I helped you out. And uh, if you have any more uh, questions or things for me, I do have a website. It's www.caringtransitionscentralwisconsin.com